Most of the time when you're going through emails, you're just trying to keep up and that's fine. But every now and then it's time to deep clean your inbox, which is a topic that is probably more exciting to me than it should be. But here we are. My name is Roxana Eldon. I run the Maintain and Stay Sane program for teachers. And in general, I get excited about small concrete steps that can make life more manageable in the long run. And that's one of my specialties in working with teachers. But actually this video has a lot of things that will apply to you even if you're not a teacher. So feel free to stick around. Deep cleaning your inbox is different than just going through your emails because as you go along, you're putting systems in place to make things easier to handle in the long term. My hope in this video is to take you past the obvious tips, but not get too convoluted because I want you to walk away from this video feeling like your email is more under your control permanently. But I also need to get some of these emails cleared out of my inbox. So let's go. So I want to talk about what I'm seeing here as I start my own inbox process. And just to give you a sense of where I'm at right now, I have let my own inbox get up to 114 messages. Hmm. How that number makes you feel will depend on your own email threshold. Everyone has a different sense of how many unread messages can be in their inbox before they feel like they've let things get out of control. There are people who feel like 10 emails is too many and there are people who have thousands of unread messages and don't feel the need to necessarily tackle that number. My own email threshold is somewhere between 50 and 100. As it gets closer to 100 or even over 100, I feel like I really need to sit down and make an appointment with myself to put enough time aside to make that red circle completely disappear. Now, if you listened closely to what I just said, you notice that this doesn't actually mean that my inbox is empty. The definition of inbox zero that I'm using here is zero unread messages. Some people feel better when they fully delete their emails, but I'm the opposite. I like to know that I can find something again if I need to, and that makes me less hesitant to move through these because each decision feels lower stakes. I just assume that anything that's marked as red never needs my attention again unless I'm actively looking for it. In which case, I can just go up to this search bar up here and look for a sender name or a phrase that I suspect is in the email. And with that in mind, you wanna make sure that your inbox is set up so you are only looking at your unread messages. For me, I have to click this graphic. Your email may be a little bit different. So just to recap, inbox zero does not mean inbox empty, but it does mean zero. That little red circle has to disappear for this job to feel complete. And that is important for three reasons. First, it turns this into a project task instead of a maintenance task. A project task has an end point. That gives you more of a dopamine hit than a maintenance task where the work will never be done. Maintenance tasks tend to feel more tedious than project tasks. And with our emails, we're in maintenance mode most of the time. The second reason it's important to get all the way to zero is because that forces you to grapple with all of the types of things that land in your inbox and all of the issues that keep things in your inbox. Those last 10 emails that are still sitting in your inbox at the end of this are probably sitting there for a much more complicated and sticky reason than the first 10 emails you're about to handle. By facing each type of email head on, you'll be able to make adjustments that will hopefully make your inbox more manageable in the long term. The final reason to get all the way to inbox zero is momentum. Handling emails is full of small decisions you may not even realize you're making. And each of those decisions has the potential to derail your progress. That goal of dealing with all of your emails gives you the drive to power through all of those micro decisions that can make it so hard to tackle your inbox. And the way I approach this, besides having a big cup of coffee in front of me, which I do right now, is that I work in rounds. And in each round, I try to cut the number roughly in half. So my goal for this first round will be to get that number down to about 60. It doesn't have to be an exact number. And I feel very confident that I am going to be able to cut this number in half quickly. That's because the more unread emails you have in your inbox, the more of them are likely to be low hanging fruit. 
And I'm gonna cut in here with a very, very easy win that might apply to a few of you, which is the very first thing to ask yourself before you do this whole deep cleaning thing is, do you have an email address that should be off the books completely? Sometimes you have an email address that you used to use 10 years ago and it is now like 90% spam. Chances are you're just holding on to it because it might be linked to an account somewhere and you're hesitant to release it back into the universe. And that's understandable. But that old email address should not be part of this number that you're trying to get down to zero right now. So if you have one of those coming through on your phone or email reader on your computer, you're gonna disconnect that right now. And if that cut your total number of emails in half already, then congratulations. You are already done with round one. Okay, now we're gonna come back to my inbox here. And just to give you a sense of how many decisions are involved here, even in this first step, you're gonna hear this sound every time I make a decision. You'll also see a list forming on the screen with the type of decision that's being made. And if you wanna see all of the notes from what I'm saying here in written form, I'll be linking to that in the description underneath this video. All right, I'm gonna start with an inbox where I tend to get a lot of things that don't need extensive action. So like a lot of receipts, here's another receipt. I have something about celebrating Earth Day with Miami-Dade County Parks. I've got, let's see, here, okay, over here on my professional email, I've got an alert that someone's accepted a request to be my friend on LinkedIn, and that is nice, but it's also not something that needs any action. Okay, up here I have a shipping update for something I ordered from Target. I've got something telling me about a comedian who I like, who is going to be in a town, but not my town. This is something that was probably already taken care of. This is something I'm not gonna be doing right now. This is something I'm not interested in. This is an answer to plans that I made that have already passed. Again, this kind of just shows me that I haven't been keeping up with the basic inbox hygiene that I usually try to maintain, which is getting rid of stuff that is really easy to get rid of. Now I'm still scanning, but I wanna share some good news here especially if you have a large number of emails, you may be able to get yourself a burst of momentum by going up to this search bar and doing a search for words like shipping or confirmation or receipt or whatever other phrases you're seeing in these unread messages. And you might be able to use this to go through a whole bunch of the same type of email and just mark them all as read. Yes! This feels like a good time to talk about one of the great joys of the inbox deep clean, which is the joy of unsubscribing. Every unsubscribe has the potential to save you hundreds of unwanted emails in the future. And here's some bonus momentum for you. As you unsubscribe, do a word search for other emails from that same sender and just delete all of them in bulk. Aha! I am now going to finish up all of the low hanging fruit in my inbox. And this is a great time for you to pause this video and do the same for yourself. I'll meet you back here after this one second of incredibly productive music. All right, nice job. At this point, you'll probably notice that the level of difficulty of handling each email is starting to change. The reason for this is that we've now gone through most of the emails that can be obviously handled in one second. And that means it's time to adjust our strategy to get through the next stretch. For the emails that are left, I want to start separating the things that I should handle sooner from the things that I wanna save for later in the process. And that is why I have several different email addresses. And they're arranged here roughly in order of priority. These three emails up here are my personal and professional emails. These are my highest priority emails because I do receive time sensitive and important notices here. And for that reason, I try to handle the emails in these three inboxes as soon as possible. If something is not time sensitive and if it's gonna take a little bit longer to handle, I want it in one of these three emails down here. Here I have a to-do list email, a to read email, and a future project ideas email. And I wanna give you a sense of how I use these because your email will be easier to handle on an ongoing basis if you have some way to set aside these three types of incoming emails. And I do recommend that you set these up during this deep clean. However, if this feels too overwhelming right at this moment, you can still get all the way to inbox zero 
during this video and just let this roll around in your mind in case you find it helpful in the future. All three of these were just free accounts that I got through Gmail and the addresses are long and not particularly memorable because I don't share them with anybody. I just have them saved in my contacts so I can easily send things to myself. My to-do list email is where I send myself things that are not time sensitive. So if I think of something I need to remember to do, no matter where I am, I put it right in the subject line of an email and send it to this address. Then I leave it unread until I've done something with it. And we'll talk about what that something is in more detail later. But I also forward things to this inbox from those higher priority inboxes where I'm handling things right away. This allows me to handle things in the order that I want to rather than in the order that they come in. My to read list is similar. Sometimes I forward things to that list, like if somebody sends me an article and I wanna read it when I have more time. But mostly I use the to read list to subscribe to things like newsletters. I tend to scan this inbox every day and read some of the more urgent things, but I'm also comfortable letting emails build up in here and then going through them when I'm sitting in a waiting room or something. On a day like today, when I'm trying to get all the way to inbox zero, I'll first just scan through here and see what I can get the point of by skimming through it quickly. But then the few articles I wanna read in detail, I'll save for later in the process. And finally, there's the future project idea list. This is for things that I might want to do someday, but I also might not. And that someday may be very far in the future. I just don't wanna lose these ideas. So this is kind of an idea capture email. And it, this email only comes through on my computer. It is not connected to my phone. I should also add that there are other ways of handling these three types of incoming information. The important thing is that you wanna set up a system where you can consistently send these three types of less urgent items. If you would like to take a moment right now to set up those three types of inboxes, feel free to pause during this next second of high powered music. And if you've decided not to do this right now, that's fine too. You'll be able to follow along with all of the instructions in the rest of this video. Once you have a place to send emails that take more of a time commitment and that can wait a little bit longer, you can settle in for round two. In round two, you want to get rid of all but the most stubborn high priority inbox items. In this round, we are skimming our remaining emails for things that can be handled in five minutes or less. This includes emails that just require a one sentence answer or very quick action items like RSVPing or ordering something you already have the link for. I will not make you listen to me handle these tasks in real time, but let's just assume I got a lot done in the one second you hear this music playing. And hello again. I am now wrapping up round two with 34 emails left. This is about half of what I had on the last round, and I'm now very close to zero unread messages in my highest priority inboxes. But it's time for a new shift in strategies because these final emails are going to be the sticky ones. You are now getting to those emails that have been hanging around in your inbox for a more personal reason. Each email is probably gonna take longer, but the upside is that if you need to change something about your overall system, these are the emails that will tell you that. So one example I sometimes run into is that sometimes there are things that belong on my calendar rather than in my inbox. Once I put them on my calendar on a date that makes sense, they can now stop clogging up my inbox. If you get to an email and nothing you've heard so far in this video applies to it, this is a time for you to pause and think about how you handle this type of information coming at you through email. And I would love to hear from you in the comments if you have any personal tricks for moving through emails or any of the unusual reasons that things tend to get stuck in your inbox. Okay, so let's assume that in this next second of music, we are all doing a great job handling the remaining emails in our high priority inboxes. And we're back. We are now down to our final two low priority inboxes. This is your to-do list email and your future ideas email. And these are where you will come face to face with the true momentum killers. 
these are things that might need research or I might need to make multiple phone calls and then wait for people to get back to me or I might not even be sure I want to do these things at all. So what I'm going to do is instead of handling these directly from my inbox, I'm going to make each of these into a separate, more organized document that I can then really see what my to-do list is of things I've been saving and maybe even putting off a little bit. Let's see, I'm gonna just start a new document here. And as I cut and paste from my emails to my documents, I'm going to organize these items into categories. So here are some summer activities I need to research, some appointments I need to make, a couple of repairs I need to look into, and miscellaneous tasks that are a little bit harder to categorize and that might be telling me something. All right, I now have one item left on my to-do list and it's something I'm, I just feel like is a really annoying task. I'm not even sure I feel like doing it and I think I'm just gonna exit out because it's been on there forever and uh, just does not feel like I need to do it, which is something you can do. I wanna emphasize this right now. You can see something on your to-do list and then just decide to not do it. Woo! And when you make that decision, you can take it off your to-do list because it is now handled. This is another of the joys of deep cleaning your inbox because sometimes that decision feels more clear and easier to make when you are focusing on keeping your momentum toward inbox zero because now you have something to measure that decision against. Is it worth me not being able to clear out my inbox just so I can tell myself I'm still going to do X? If not, take it off the list. Not everything you once thought was worth doing is meant to be done. So now I have 14 emails left, but they're all in my future idea inbox. And I'm going to do something very similar here to what I did with my to-do list inbox. The main difference is that some of these things will need to be handled even farther into the future. They may require a huge time commitment, or you may not have grown into them yet, or you may not even be sure that you even want to do them. So as I cut and paste things onto this idea document, I may end up transferring some of them onto my to-do list that I'm going to try to handle within the next day or so. But I'm also going to be thinking about how I would want to organize these if I need to save them for an even more distant time in the future. An example of this as a teacher might be that you have an idea for teaching a novel that you're not going to be teaching again until the following school year. Or maybe you have an idea for reorganizing your classroom and you won't be able to tackle that until December. Or you may not even know if you're teaching third grade next year, but in case you do, you have a wonderful idea. There's more of a deep dive on how to incorporate this into your teaching in my course. But the important thing for now is that you don't want to lose these ideas. Some of them you won't use, but some of them are going to be great. And you may not be in a position yet to know which is which. I'm going to scroll through here and my goal for maybe tomorrow, maybe later today is going to be to get all the things off of that final document and then put that document in the trash, which always feels good. All right. I want you guys to be with me for this dramatic final moment where I click on this last email in my inbox and make it go from unread to red and the red circle has disappeared. I am at inbox zero for at least the next few minutes. And I want to thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I wish you a happy deep clean of your own inbox and I'll see you at inbox zero.